All right, in this lesson, we're going to continue looking at optimization problems. Uh, this is section 6.5 if you're one of my students. What we're going to do is look at a problem as an extension from a question 6.4. It's actually from your 6.4 study guide problem 1. There is a YouTube lesson describing that problem because we're going to skip the introduction to the problem. But the question says this. A toy company manufactures two types of toy vehicles, racing cars and sport utility vehicles. Because the supply of materials is limited, they can make no more than 40 racing cars in a day and no more than 60 sport utility vehicles in a day can be made. However, they can make 70 or more vehicles in total each day. So one thing that we did, uh, based on those constraints, no more than 40 racing cars, no more than 60 sport utility vehicles, and <clears throat> 70 or more vehicles in a day, what we looked at in section 6.4 when we looked at this problem was how to come up with a solution region. And this is it here. This region here represents all the possible combinations where there's <clears throat> no more than 40 racing cars, no more than 60 sport utility vehicles, and at least 70 cars. So those would be all the possible combinations. Uh, the next bullet says this, it costs $8 to make a racing car and $12 to make a sport utility vehicle. There are many possible combinations of racing cars and sport utility vehicles that could be made, as evidenced here. This represents many combinations. The company wants to know what combinations will result in the minimum and maximum costs. So they're trying to minimize or maximize the cost, and that has to do with the objective function. Their objective is to maximize or minimize the cost, so that's their objective. So if you look at their objective function, that's right here. <clears throat> it's that the cost is 12 times the number of SUVs, because it's $12 per SUV, plus $8 per every race car. So that's their objective function. <clears throat> Uh, the following model represents this situation. So we've represented the situation. If you'd like to read this, these are the constraints listed here, and this is the objective function. What we're actually going to do is investigate the objective function related to the solution region. So what are some patterns that we notice? Uh, here's the first question. It says, as you move from left to right across the solution region, what happens to the cost in the objective function? So let's just take two points, for example. Let's just take this one and then this one here. It shouldn't shock you that the orange point, which is 40 sport utility vehicles and 40 race cars, so the cost would be 40 sport utility vehicles, so $12 times 40 sport utility vehicles plus $8 times 40 SUVs, and that would end up being uh, 480 plus 320, and that is... <clears throat> $800. That would be the cost. Now it shouldn't shock you when we look at this purple point here, as I'm moving from left to right, what that represents is more SUVs and the same number of race cars. So if you're making more SUVs, predictably I would say, because there's 50 of them at that point, predictably it's going to be more expensive. Okay, so that would be in this case uh, 600 plus 320, so the cost would be $920. So the answer to the question, what happens as you move from left to right, is you're making more SUVs, which means that the cost goes up. So that's somewhat predictable. So the cost is up. Part B, again, I would say somewhat predictable. Predict what happens to the cost in the objective function as you move from the bottom to the top of the feasible region. So let's say we're going from uh, this point here to this point here, so from the red point to the green point. Well, as we're creating more racing cars, this is 10 racing cars, and this would be 30 racing cars, the cost is going to go up, I would say predictably. Uh, so predict what happens. Uh, cost is going up. Why? Because there are more race cars. Okay. Uh, question C, what point in the solution region results in a maximum cost? Well, again, I would say predictably the maximum cost would be the most SUVs and uh, race cars possible, which I believe is this point right here, 60 and 40. That's going to be your maximum cost, and you could find out what that is. Um, so the point would be 60, 40, and the cost would be 12 times 60 plus... <clears throat> $8 for every race car, and that's times 40, and that would be 720 plus 320, and that results in a cost of $1,020. So that would be the cost. Uh, part D is a little bit more difficult in a sense. Uh, which, <clears throat> what point in the feasible region results in a minimum cost? My suggestion is that it's definitely going to be either the bottom corner or the left corner. 
So it's either going to be this red point here or this blue point here. So which one is going to be cheaper? Because one is lower, but one is further to the left. So uh, let's look at this separate combination. So if I look at that red point, that would be 30 SUVs and 40 race cars. So that cost of that blue point is 30 SUVs. So the cost should be 12 times 30 plus 8 times 40. And that is 360 plus 320. That's a $680 cost. <clears throat> and the cost of that red point, where there's less race cars but more sport utility vehicles, that would be the cost is uh, 12 times 60 sport utility vehicles plus <clears throat> 8 times 10 racing cars, and that would be 720 plus 80, that would be $800. So, uh, and this shouldn't again be that surprising, uh, the combination that actually gives you less SUVs, it would be cheaper because SUVs are more expensive. So uh, this would be your solution here. So what point? That would be the point 3040 is the cheapest, okay?